2,000 years ago or maybe not, hear the story of a community that gathers. Recently lost a leader, stuck with interim leadership and not sure what direction to go. Frightened, finding comfort in gathering together, but aware too that you speak with different voices. There are some in the community that gathers in the upper room who love to sing contemporary music and let the place rock. And there are others who think it's wonderful if we claim the ancient hymns of our faith and hold firm to them. There are some who like to get up and move and receive communion one by one, bread and wine, oops, wait, grape juice, and still others who liked the dignity of plates that pass down row by row and give us time to reflect and meditate. There are some who believe that unless the church is out there in the world, we're not being true to our calling. And there are some who say, wait a minute, if we don't pay the bills at home, how are we ever going to reach out to the world if the place can't sustain itself? You've already understood that we're not talking about a 2,000-year-old community, but instead a community that gathers waiting for the Spirit uncertain about what lies ahead and trying to discern, figure out what it is that God's got in store for us. We're a Pentecost waiting community gathered in an upper room speaking many different languages and held together only by the promise of what's gone before. Jesus present, Jesus who said to the community, I'll go, but I'll send a spirit to give you a wisdom that right now you can't possess. And the community that gathered in love Looking around, people nodded and said, yeah, we do love each other, and we do pray for one another. We're aware of the ones who are broken. We're aware of the ones who are lonely. We're aware of the ones who used to be part of who we are and then said, no, I've had enough, and went somewhere else or stayed home. And we're a community that believing in spirit power Trust that God still got something more in mind for us to stretch us out of our comfort zones, to move us into engagement with the world. A Pentecost community, a pre-Pentecost community that waits for a wind to blow. Jesus spoke to the gathered disciples before his crucifixion. And in that long passage of three chapters of John 15, 16, and 17, Jesus gives, in a sense, marching orders to the community that's yet to be. To the gathered group of disciples and to a whole wider community that centuries by centuries by centuries would try and figure out what it is that God's got in store, Jesus says, God, be with them, protect them, help the world to see them, help them, us, to realize that we're not of the world, although we're in it, We live by different values and with a different understanding of what God calls us to. 
And then Jesus says something that's important for us. Jesus says, so that they might be one, even as God and me are one, even as you, Father, and me are one, that they might be one. United Church anniversary today, these years ago, almost 90, the United Church claimed as its motto that all might be one. Ut omnes unum sint. The new wording that's been added to the crest of the United Church just at the two general councils ago are words and glyphics in Cree that say, all my children, all my brothers, all my community. That we might all be one has been a vision of the United Church for all of these years based on those words from John that we might all be one becomes our mission, our purpose. And it requires something of us. I mean, folks joined our church today to be members, and that might just be a way of kind of claiming a status. In the past, it used to be, you could say, oh, I'm a member of this church, or I'm a member of that church, and you could hold that over folks who didn't have that status. Not today, though. Uh, Mostly it means that you're able to vote at boring meetings that are important, or that... uh, Somebody will approach you and ask if won't you be ready to help with serving communion or one of the other jobs that kind of goes to people who are members. No, the only reason for becoming a member of our church is because you're ready to claim, like all of us did, we want to be one. We want to be a community where there's room to welcome in others. We want to be a community where who we are is respected and appreciated, who we are with our warts and wrinkles is acknowledged and accepted and accommodated, but who we are is also part of a whole that seizes its purpose to go out into the world. I'm coming down on the side when I talked about this or that, that we are a community that unless we're engaged in making the, helping the world to know that the world is one under the umbrella of God's love, that we're failing in our mission. That unless every one of us in our hearts sees that we've got a mission to speak to the lonely ones in the world and the lonely ones in the community to speak to the troubled, struggling, hurt ones in the world and in our community. When we learn our purpose anew, that we might be one, we gain a sense of direction and vision for what's to be our ministry into the future. The United Church Creed, that other document that we love so much, has only three short statements about faith. One of the things that used to be understood about creeds is you had to include all of those things, and unless you said yes to all of those things, you really couldn't be part of the community. Our church said, let's pare it down. Let's understand that what we believe is that we're a Trinity Church, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, or Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer, that we're a church that believes that God's kind of incapable of being contained in one descriptor. We believe that there's a part or an element of who God is that's Creator, continuing to create, building a strong and better world. There's another aspect of God that's Jesus, real individual who came into the world, 
touched the folks around him and still teaches us today. And then there's a hoped-for, spirit-promised gift of God, Holy Spirit, that's got something more to say to the church than has already been said, that's got something more to require of the church. But that's all we say about what you must believe. And then in typical United Church fashion, we remind people, okay, that's what you said you wanted to believe and trust. This is the implication. We are the church called to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to celebrate, to enjoy fight evil, to claim and rail against injustice, to tell the story of Jesus. And then to go out confidently into our community, out of our front doors and into the world to claim the promise of God in life, in death, in life beyond death, in every bit of human existence, God is with us. We are not alone. May this wind spirit power descend on us this day. May we know in our hearts, in our minds, in our beings that move that God has a direction for us. That God knows us, loves us, and sends us. Get out of here. Get moving. Become who God intended you to be and who in being you will find life. Thanks be to God.